As someone who builds custom car audio, I'm always looking for ways to improve my process and new custom techniques to add to my skill set. And today, my friends, I have something cool that I'm going to share with you. Here I have made a custom beauty panel. Now the techniques that I've used on this can be used for the front of a custom subwoofer box, for custom door panels, for an amplifier rack, anything that you can imagine. But there's more to this panel than meets the eye. First off, whenever I make a panel like this, I have to meticulously measure with a tape measure to make sure that these shapes are lined up on each side, to make sure that these arcs are lined up and everything is perfectly symmetrical. What if I told you that I made this entire panel without once needing to pick up a tape measure? How is that possible? I'm gonna show you. Now see how this panel has this piece that's wrapped in carpet and then this piece that's wrapped in vinyl? You would think if I flip it over that you would see two different pieces here, but it's actually only one. So how was this transition here created? Also notice that I have this cool diamond pattern here on this insert. How was this done? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys step-by-step step how that panel was built and I'm also gonna be showing you a new series of tools from Mobile Solutions. I also talked to Mobile Solutions and they were super cool and they're hooking us up with a car audio fabrication fan only discount so let's get on into the video and I'll let you guys know more details on that. So the first one of the newly released tools from our show sponsor Mobile Solutions I want to show you guys is this right here. This is the Smart Ruler. The Smart Ruler has 12 parallel slots that are spaced one inch from each other. It has a ruler with values along the top and then it has two separate sets of pins. One set of pins sticks out the top of the Smart Ruler and the other set is out of the bottom. So this is both a layout tool as well as a woodworking tool. Let's start with doing a layout. The way this works as a layout tool is I can use those pins to line up against the edge of the workpiece and then I can sketch several different lines that are parallel to each other with a pencil. This gives me a series of lines that looks something like this and now I can take the smart ruler and I can rotate it so now the pins are on this side on the top of the board and I'm going to sketch another set of lines. But what I'm going to do is is I'm going to just roughly judge where halfway is and I'm only gonna sketch lines up to that halfway point and then I'm gonna rotate this around and put the pins on the other side and then sketch those lines. So what I've done here is I've created two different grid systems. And the purpose of this is a lot of times when we're doing these cool custom panels, we're using different shapes like this that don't necessarily have a straight edge. So let's say that we knew we wanted this to line up at a certain point. Instead of having to carefully measure constantly with a tape measure, we have this nice grid system so that we can easily just count the number of squares to make sure that this kind of shape lines up perfectly on both sides. Now you'll also notice because when I was doing these lines here that were off of this edge, I didn't go past the halfway point, you'll see that I have two lines that are very close to each other. And that tells me that directly between those two lines is the exact middle. The same goes for the lines that are this way, vertically. I drew exactly 12 lines this direction. I drew exactly 12 lines this direction. So if I take my smart ruler and draw a line between common points that I've counted, it will mark out the exact center of the box. I've used a geometry trick to directly locate the exact center of this piece of wood. So now I can position my subwoofer cutout perfectly. To locate the subwoofer, I'm gonna be using one of these circle templates. Now the problem is I have my middle point between these two lines right here, this direction, but I don't have a center line here yet to line up with on that point. Not to worry, I will just use this as sort of a square. I've got the pins lined up against the edge of the wood, lined up on this point here, and we'll draw a line. I've got the cutout hole for the subwoofer, and just so you guys know, this is gonna look sweet. It's going to actually hide all of the mounting hardware and sit over the subwoofer just like that. So now we get into what I was talking about before. I've got the smart template here and I can simply just, you know, count the lines. I know that I'm one line off of the edge of this circle on each side. So I'm gonna line that up right like that. And then I know the center lines on the template can just line up between those two lines as my center line. And actually, you know what? I'm thinking that this might be a little bit too close. So I kind of wish that there was a line halfway in between these two lines that I could line up with. 
there's a way to do that too. The whole purpose of there being two sets of the pins, one on each side, is this is offset exactly an inch, but this is an inch and a half. So what that does is it actually gives us a little bit more resolution. If we flip it over, we line it up like so, and I'm gonna draw a couple lines real quick. Now you can see we have much more resolution, many more lines to deal with that are closer to each other. That way we can perfectly line it up. So on this side, I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna sketch that line. I've been able to do all of this complex alignment without ever touching a tape measure and in a very short amount of time. So in a matter of minutes, I've created a basic idea for my beauty panel here. I'm gonna have the flush mounted subwoofer sticking in there. I'm gonna have these two insert panels with some design work going on inside. You guys will see that. But I wanna add a little bit something more. I wanna add like a swooping arc here and here. Let's see which one. Let's use this. Now the same here, I almost don't even really have to count. It's just a matter of looking at the symmetry and determining those locations. So I take my arc and I line it up with each of those two points and then I will sketch a line. So there we have it. Now the arc lines are drawn in as well. Now the Smart Ruler is much more than just a layout tool. It's actually a woodworking tool as well. Now something real quick before I show you how it's a woodworking tool, keep in mind that you can easily slide along while you're guided on these pins so you could create a very long line if need be. To use this as a woodworking tool, we'll be using these. These are router bushings. And this is part of the new template guide system. The template guide system has these seven different router bushings along with the lock nut, and then it also comes with five different router bits. So what are these actually used for? Well, these are used in conjunction with your router. And just in case this is the first time you've seen one of these videos, a router is a woodworking tool that spins in this location here, and then you put different router bits inside of the router to make different cuts. The way that the bushings work is we will take one of the bushings like this, and you can see that hole in the router base plate. Now this is an industry standard size, and if we line it up, we can see that the bushing goes right in. Now, if you're wondering if these will work with your particular brand router, the answer is most likely yes. As long as the router has a hole in the base plate like this, they will likely fit as it's an industry standard size. I've loaded a router bushing in here and I've secured it with the lock nut and I've also put in a router bit. The particular bit that I'm using in this case is the 3 16 inch spiral. Once we plunge down into the workpiece, the bit is gonna stick out like so, but the edge of this bushing gives us an edge to ride against so that we can guide the bit and the router and cut exactly where we want to. Now what's cool about this is this bushing perfectly fits within these slots on the smart ruler. This means if I wanted to make several straight cuts in the piece of wood, I can do so by running the router back and forth. I'm not actually gonna do that cut quite yet though because I wanna show you that cut later using the smart ruler XL. What I am going to use the template guide system for along with the router bushings right now is cutting the outside edge of this piece here. I start with sticking that template that I'm going to be using in position using template tape. To help support the router on each side of the cut, I'm also putting this larger template on there, but you could also use straight sticks of wood. And keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to have templates to be able to use these router bushings. You could use a scrap piece of wood and cut a sweeping arc on it with a jigsaw, and then you could copy that onto your panel. Once I'm done making that cut, Cutting pass with the router, you can see that I've created this groove here. Next, I'm using this flush trim bit to flush trim the inside of the shape and remove it from the panel. So here we are, I've completed that flush trim around the inside. I'm gonna detach this from the panel so you guys can see. By using that router bushing and the template guide system, I've created this groove that goes around that perfect shape. And I'm going to use this to create an accent line in the carpet material when I go to wrap this panel. Now the reason that there's different sizes of straight bits included with this system is so that you can create a different width of cut depending on the materials you're going to use. If you were gonna do a vinyl to vinyl transition, you wouldn't want a full 3 16 inch cut. In that case, you would use only the 1 8 inch cut. I'm now going to repeat that step that I did here, but in this case, I'm just going to use the arc template on this line that we drew earlier. So you saw that I used that arc to make these transition line cuts. 
And a couple other steps I've done here in the meantime, I've also cut out the center circle. I did that by using a flush trim bit on the router along with a circle template. And then you'll notice the inside of this circle is rounded over along with the template shapes on each side. To do that, I use this half inch round over from the eco tray. Now, if you guys are just getting started in custom car audio, I definitely recommend that you take a look at this tray. I teamed up with Mobile Solutions to design this tray. It's a great kit for getting started because it has two different shaping bits. You get a flush trim bit, you get a rabbiting bit that I'll show you guys in a second, but then we get all these different bearings that we can pair up with the flush trim bit and the rabbit bit to oversize and undersize. Again, a super powerful kit for getting started. Give you guys a bit of a sneak peek here. This is gonna look sick. I mentioned using that rabbiting bit. We're actually going to use it right now on the back side of the panel because I want to create an inset step around this shape. And the reason for that is we're actually going to be nesting a separate piece that we're gonna make with these really cool diagonal lines in here. So I have to have a little pocket for it to sit into. Let's get this loaded and make a cut. That rabbiting bit made this pocket here and I did the same thing around the subwoofer. There's a couple of things here that I want you guys to keep in mind. First off, up until this point, I've only used one single piece of wood. I'm gonna have multiple different transitions of material here, but again, only one piece of wood. So this is a really simple way to create a beauty panel really quickly and efficiently. Also keep in mind that we could use just this as a beauty panel. The back side of this board could mate up with the front of our subwoofer box that the subwoofer is actually mounted to, and you would figure out some sort of way to temporarily connect this to the subwoofer box. But I wanna take things one step further. I wanna make a super cool cross-hatched pattern inside here, and for that we're gonna be using the Smart Ruler XL. Now the difference between the Smart Ruler XL and the Smart Ruler is one, this thing is obviously a little bit larger, the slots are long, Longer, but you'll notice right away that it has these wings on it, these kind of pizza slice looking wings. Everything you see in frame right here is included. You get these knobs and this hardware, and you also get one of these straight pieces from the SFS Axis Shape Creator Kit. And the point of that is you can see that we can actually adjust our angle with this straight piece. So how do we use this thing? Well, I'm going to start with taking a piece of raw material and I'm using template tape to stick it to my work work table in order to hold it in position. Now notice how I lined up the edge of the raw material so it's just barely sticking over the edge of the table. This was intentional because if we take this, put it in place, now the straight piece lines up on the edge of that raw material and we have clearance underneath for this knob. Now you could have that knob on top, it's reversible, so it could be on top like this one is, but the reason that I want it on the bottom is so when I'm coming across with my router base, I don't wanna hit that. So that's designed intentionally that way. What we are going to be doing here is we're gonna be using the smart ruler along with our bushing set and the router to actually cut some grooves. Now, since this is a adjustable, you can see there's multiple different lines here for different degree increments. So in this case, I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna use this hole here and line it up with my knob. That is 15 degrees. I line up the tool so that it's roughly in the center of the workpiece and I sketch several lines using a pencil. The reason you do this is let's say you want to create a really large piece. Let's say that this was twice as wide and we wanted each of these slots to continue. Well, you would cut this series of slots and then you would advance this along that piece of wood and reline up your lines, a little something like so, and that way you can continue cutting each of those slots. So in preparation to get that first set of slots cut, I stick template tape on the back side and then I stick it to the workpiece. To make my decorative cut, I have a couple of different options. If you want to do a series of cuts for different material transitions, you could use one of these straight bits. But in this case, we're doing something a little bit more decorative, so I can go with that half inch round bit or I can go with this flat chamfer. In this case, we're gonna go with this guy the flat chamfer. Now we of course know that the reasoning between the different size bushings is so that you can have different offsets from your workpiece. So if you wanted to do two lines that were very close to each other when we were using the arcs, that's why you would use that. But in this case, I'm going to use this one because this fits perfectly in the channels.
Now that I've made my passes, let's undo the template tape here and see what it looks like. Check it out. Now just so you guys know, I recommend doing a couple of test passes. That's what I was doing over here to set the depth of my cut. Another thing, it definitely makes it easier to use a plunge base, which is what I'm using here, but you don't have to have a plunge base. You could use a handheld router. Simply stick that guy on there and pull it along. I'm going to disconnect the straight piece from that right side wing and attach it on the left side, re-stick everything in place, and I'm going to cut another series of cuts. The moment of truth, my friends. Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah. I've created this size area here to work with, which will be more than enough because I only need to cut out two of these. So I can do one there and one over here. But do remember that if you did need to do a larger piece, like I was talking about earlier, you can simply advance this further along, line it up with your previous cuts, and then just continue each of those cuts. The other thing that's cool about this is you can see right now I have a fairly large diamond size. Let's say that you wanted to go even larger. Well, you could skip and do every other channel for a larger diamond. What if you wanted to go smaller? Well, you would line this up again, but this time you would line it up so that you can't see those cuts that you just made and you would make another series of cuts. In fact, you could play with that spacing to get all sorts of different kinds of geometry. I could do one set of cuts this way and then I could do another set of cuts this way where I skip every other. So I would end up with a different looking diamond pattern. Also remember you could use different router bits. So instead of that flat chamfer, I could use that half inch round bit for more of a curved profile. Also understand that the Smart Ruler XL is fully compatible with the Mobile Solutions SFS Axis Shape Creator Kit. You can see that if we wanted to extend beyond 45 degrees we can do so using extra pieces from that kit. To cut out my diamond pattern that's going to backload into my beauty panel, I'm going to use this template here. When I'm positioning my shape to carefully cut these out, I'm gonna take note of exactly where the diamonds line up, that way it looks good and symmetrical with each piece. I've rough cut the shape, I've template taped this in position. I'm using a flush trim bit with a large bearing in order to oversize the edge of this because this template is too small and I want this piece to fit perfectly inside of that pocket that I made earlier. I've got both my diamond pieces cut here and here's a mistake that I made that you guys can learn from so you don't do the same thing. When you're rough cutting with your jigsaw, I would use more of a fine tooth blade rather than one that can cut super quickly when you're cutting, but I'm not too worried about it because once I push it in here, it's going to be hidden behind that lip. This is just a practice panel anyway, but you can see that now my pieces fit nice and flush you guys ready to flip this over and see what it looks like? Come on back next week. Ah, I'm just kidding you guys, let's flip it over. There we go, that looks pretty. I like it. What do you guys think? Let's get this thing upholstered. For the sake of time, we're gonna fly through the upholstery process. If you wanna see more detail, you can check out some of the other videos on my channel. For wrapping the piece that has the diamond pattern on it, I wanna make sure that I use a roller tool to push the vinyl down into those grooves before I wrap it around the outside perimeter. This tool is much more solid, which really allows me to push down and put some pressure into these grooves, and the wheel is much wider, allowing it to better match those grooves. Here, I'm carefully cutting away the excess material from the back. I'm also using the roller to push the carpet down into this transition. I'll use that line to allow me to precisely cut the edge of the material. Once I've also added the vinyl to the front of the project and wrapped it around the back side, I push my inserts into position. And here, my friends, we have the front side of the beauty panel. I want to call your attention to the transition between the carpet and the tan vinyl. It's looking good, but I have a little trick for you guys that we can make it look even better. When I picked the diameter of the bit that I used to make this cut, I made it a little bit larger, leaving clearance for this wire that I'm pressing down into the groove. I know, I know, it's kind of funny, right? Just using some wire, but it actually gives a really good finished touch, and most of us have tons of different colors of wire on hand. This was just a practice panel for me to show you guys these techniques, but one thing that I would do differently in the future is on this part here, I used a straight cutting bit, and that's because I was planning on transitioning between two different color vinyls, but I ended up deciding just to keep everything one piece of vinyl. So what I would have done differently is I would have used one of these profile bits instead, so this outside shape here would be much like this flat chamfer, or I could have used 
this half inch round. Live and learn, but now you know some cool techniques that you can use to add some more impact to your future builds. Now here on screen right now, you can see some of the pictures that Mobile Solutions sent me to use from one of their recent trainings, and you can see how the diamonds and cut lines really make the panel look one of a kind. Now whenever I help Mobile Solutions launch one of their new tools, there's always a car audio fabrication fan only discount. You guys can check out details of that down in the video description, along with links to all the tools used in this video. If you want to see some more of my builds in depth, you can check out some of the video playlists here on screen. I hope you guys enjoyed learning these techniques. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping make these videos possible. As always, my friends, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.